Okay, so welcome to this morning's webinar. Uh, the title of this webinar is Quoting and Sales Pipelines in B2B Wholesale Distribution Manufacturing Businesses. Uh, that's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, actually it's fairly important to recognize that actually managing pipelines in wholesale and distribution businesses uh, is, is sometimes much more complex than it might be in uh, a service industry or uh, selling something like software, there's, uh, there's complexities in quoting uh, and uh, different kinds of pipelines, but also uh, one of the key aspects of uh, uh, running a wholesale and distribution business is in some scenarios, uh, you might need to spend a fair while in your sales pipeline. And in other scenarios, you just need to get through the job quickly uh, and efficiently doing volume of quotations and uh, volumes of uh, sales orders. So uh, in today's webinar, we're just going to really focus on uh, those different types of uh, pipelines uh, and uh, the different types of quotations that we would use in those sales models. So first of all, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Andrew Ardron, uh, and I'm the CEO at ProspectSoft. The topics that we're just going to cover today uh, are we're going to have a look at the typical sales models and pipelines that you find in a B2B wholesale and distribution business. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, we actually look at the software and see how you can record uh, your progress through those different types of pipeline and how that can be used for reporting. Uh, we'll just very quickly touch on the process of actually setting up those uh, different pipelines just so you can see kind of how easy it is to, to do that. Um, and as we go through looking at those pipelines, uh, we'll also look at producing the actual quotations that you might send out uh, and emails that you might send out during that uh, uh, sales process. So let's start with those sales models. And um, it's always true that whenever you look at a model, uh, you're looking at a, a, a slightly oversimplified uh, categorization of different types of things. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to do that job and oversimplify uh, what's a fairly complex topic, but it will help us to kind of see how these different types of sales inquiries need to be handled in the CRM uh, and how uh, the sales team need to manage them differently. So uh, one categorization I've got is, is complex sales pipelines uh, and then somewhat Unimaginatively, I've got medium complexity uh, and then uh, either low complexity or quick uh, sales orders and sales process. And uh, in terms of examples of what might make a complex pipeline uh, in a distribution business, uh, any kind of process that involves uh, you as a distributor or wholesaler actually doing uh, perhaps the fitment of the uh, equipment that you're distributing or distributing or uh, having to install that equipment somewhere. So if you're um, selling uh, some kind of machinery like lifts or uh, maybe even big coffee machines or something like that, uh, then there might be a requirement to have an installation project as well. Um, or specifications. So if you're supplying uh, components to uh, somebody who's making something else. So uh, building products to a uh, building contractor, so selling tiles or lighting equipment or something like that, uh, where you're having to specify the products to go into a project. Those would <clears throat> give you a, a, a fairly complex uh, sales process. But uh, there are also lots of other types of uh, sales process and sales models that would also give you a complex pipeline. Uh, and another example of that, uh, which is often overlooked when we look at sales pipelines, is the process of signing up a new potential retailer or distributor. So if you're selling products that might actually be um, relatively straightforward products to sell, uh, you could still have a complex sales process of actually signing up a retailer um, so if you've got a branded products and you wanted to have good retailers uh, that have been set up with a good shop window uh, or storefront or um, 
display box or something uh, and uh, you have to kind of go through a process of qualifying that retailer uh, uh, and organizing uh, all of those things then you would have a complex sales process of signing up a potential uh, retail or distributor uh, and those complex uh, sales models whatever they actually cover um, tend to involve things like price negotiation perhaps multiple quotes or multiple iterations of that quotation uh, and multiple documents and conversations as well as obviously different stages during that sales process In what I've classified here as a medium uh, complexity sales model, uh, you might have things like an existing customer uh, reordering uh, from you. So they, they've already got an account, uh, they're already uh, a distributor of yours, um, or they're already a customer, and they're reordering, but they still need to go through a process of a confirmatory quote to confirm the prices, uh, perhaps a little bit of negotiation. Um, or where you've got a new or an existing customer asking for a comparative price quote. So, you know, perhaps trying to buy a laptop or something uh, and trying to get a price from you and from another distributor. You know, you want to go through a process of managing those sales inquiries, making sure they're followed up, uh, doing a quotation for the customer, but you don't necessarily want as complex a sales process as you might have uh, doing a fitment or a specification job uh, and, and doing lots and lots of different quotations and, and different stages. Uh, and obviously, um, in a lot of distribution businesses, um, you also get fairly quick sales as well. So uh, this would be characterized as an existing customer reordering uh, without, possibly even without the need for a quote, they just want to ring you up, uh, tell you what they need, uh, and uh, place that order verbally over the phone. Um, and so those orders are possibly phone, email, fax, if anybody still does that. Uh, I perhaps added that just for amusement. Um, or, or even when they're sending you a CSV or an Excel order, uh, just for you to process through to uh, your inventory management system. Um, and another example of this that I won't go into here, but another example would be an existing customer um, or a, a new customer placing on an on account or a cash sale uh, via an e-commerce site where, again, they know what they're buying, they've chosen the products, they know the prices, and they're just trying to place an order. So that would be a very quick turnaround and another example of something that doesn't require much of a sales process. So in terms of what you would need a uh, CRM system to do, uh, for a distribution business that's running these kind of sales models. Um, I should reiterate at this stage that any one business can have a number of these, these different sales models. So um, you could certainly have a complex sales process for signing up a new retailer and then a very simple process for uh, just restocking uh, the goods at that retailer or signing up a new pub to sell your beer and then restocking uh, the beer at that pub. Um, you could also have a complex sales process if your business was selling uh, cranes where you have to build the crane, fit them, et cetera. And then you could have a simple sales process for selling uh, the parts or the service packs or uh, the lubricants or whatever. So uh, a lot of businesses would have more than one of these scenarios. Um, but if you're managing a complex sale through uh, a CRM system, uh, you would need a sales lead uh, with multiple stages and perhaps the ability to do multiple quote versions, uh, multiple options of quotes or multiple iterations. Um, and during that sales pipeline, the salespeople would be involved in multiple follow-ups uh, and taking that sale through multiple stages. Uh, for a medium complexity uh, sale, uh, we're perhaps talking about one quote. Um, there might be just one version of that or maybe a couple of versions perhaps. Um, but a much simpler pipeline uh, that, that runs over a much shorter duration with less steps. Uh, and the final scenario, quick scenario, um, we'd really be looking for uh, just the customer rings you up, uh, you perhaps give them the prices over the phone, effectively a verbal quote, uh, and then you just process that order there and then perhaps taking a purchase order number or or maybe not even taking a purchase order number um, and, and, and effectively taking that order immediately without needing to follow it up and call the customer back tomorrow to confirm that they want the goods or whatever. Uh, so hopefully uh, everybody can see 
uh, their business and one or two of their sales processes in uh, one of these three categories. And obviously, uh, if you've got sort of more complex scenarios or different scenarios to this, then we can perhaps discuss with you uh, your sales pipelines and uh, uh, which model would be most appropriate to use. But let's uh, let's take those uh, different sales models. Uh, let's uh, flip over to the CRM and actually see these in action. Uh, and um, I'm actually uh, going to show these in reverse order. So I'll start with the quickest one as being the kind of simplest example to show you first, uh, and then I'll build up the complexity as we move into uh, how we would manage the medium and then the more complex sales. So uh, here is uh, our CRM system and I've just logged in and this is my dashboard. Uh, and if I'd got a number of sales going on, um, I'd be able to see my pipeline and things like that. But we'll kind of see that building up as we go through. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that uh, Michelle Jury, uh, one of my existing customers, has rung me up uh, and uh, Michelle uh, wants to just place a quick order uh, for uh, some products that she's bought from me before. And obviously I could search for Michelle. Um, actually, I can see uh, that Michelle is my previous searcher. So uh, nice and quickly, I could just click on Michelle and open that up. But just to show you the searching, uh, let's search for Michelle. And here we've got Michelle Jury and some other things that we've previously done with Michelle have come up here. So uh, let's open Michelle's record. Uh, and uh, here we see Michelle. We can see some activity, uh, some notes, uh, previous documents that we've sent uh, and conversations we had with Michelle. Uh, but we're going to go ahead uh, and take a sales order for Michelle. So I'm going to create a sales order. Uh, I can choose the currency. Uh, I can use template uh, orders, uh, and we'll kind of come back to that in a little bit. And here we are, we're going to send, uh, sorry, we're going to add some products to this. So uh, I've got some uh, very imaginative example products here, product A, uh, uh, and product B, uh, and uh, I see what we'll have, uh, 10 of those and also put product C on here just to show you uh, a different format of product. So this product comes in a pack uh, and so one pack is 10 items. Uh, so there we go, we've put a, uh, a sales order together. Um, I could also have gone into a, a full screen search uh, and uh, load up all of the different products and put one of those, three of those, etc. in. Um, I can also go through uh, things that Michelle has purchased recently uh, and just uh, reorder the same things that she's bought in the past. So uh, a few different ways to put a quick quotation or quick sales order together. Um, I'm not going to do an example of this, but actually I did mention that perhaps if the customer sent you an email with an attached uh, Excel or CSV, you could actually just drag and drop that uh, onto uh, this screen uh, and then it will automatically populate the sales order with the products uh, that and the quantities that Michelle has asked for in the uh, Excel file she sent us. Um, but lots of different ways that I can uh, build a quick order. Uh, and then uh, when I'm happy with that, I can tell Michelle, yeah, the total of that is, uh, is £1,200. Uh, and then I can just confirm that order. Uh, and uh, if I was connected up to Unleashed uh, or Zero or something, uh, then that order would be posted straight through uh, and waiting for my warehouse guys to ship it out. So that's really the very simplest sale we could do. There was uh, literally no process there uh, other than just uh, entering the products, giving the prices over the phone uh, and confirming the order. Um, I should say that a couple of people have asked me uh, in, in the past what happens if uh, I get through that process, the customer's not quite ready to place their order, they want to come back to me later this afternoon. Uh, well, rather than confirming it, I could just save this for later uh, and I could come back to it. But let's uh, go now back to Michelle uh, and let's imagine our second scenario uh, moving up that complexity scale of uh, just doing, Michelle, uh, a quick quotation. She wants some prices for some existing, uh, some products that she knows about, 
we're not going to do a complex sale here. Um, there's no installation, no fitment, uh, no complex negotiation that's going to go on. But I do want to give Michelle a quotation. I do want to follow it up uh, tomorrow to make sure that she places her order. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and create a quote uh, for Michelle. Uh, I can uh, uh, new uh, batteries, for instance. I could be anything. I don't have to give it a description. Uh, I can leave that blank. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and create this uh, quotation. And uh, again, let's put uh, a couple of products on here for those. And I have two of those. So we go, we've created our uh, quotation. Uh, and uh, as I say, this is a, a, a simple sales process. So you can see the top of the screen, uh, unlike the last screen, there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, a tool at the top here that just shows you the status that you're currently in. So in the, current, in the status of quotas uh, of, of doing a quotation, uh, and then we'll be waiting for confirmation after we've sent the uh, quote to the customer, uh, and then hopefully we'll uh, get our order confirmed tomorrow when we follow it up. So uh, we put our products together. Um, I'm going to do a really quick email here, uh, and I'm going to choose a template. I'm going to do a basic quote email, and it's going to populate my email uh, with a quotation table. Uh, Dear Michelle um, or Mrs. Jury, thanks for your uh, inquiry. Uh, here's my quotation. I'm going to send that to the customer. Uh, I'm going to uh, change the state of that to awaiting confirmation. I could do other things like reserve the stock. So if I knew that we were low on stock, um, I can click on the information here and see the, the stock levels for these things. If I knew I was low on stock and I was expecting this customer to buy tomorrow and the ask, customer asked me to reserve it for them, uh, I could reserve some stock for them. Uh, uh, but I'm just going to uh, set that for awaiting confirmation. Uh, and uh, I'm actually going to ask John to follow this up tomorrow. Uh, please call tomorrow and chase this quotation. Uh, perhaps I'm going to be out tomorrow. Uh, or maybe John uh, is Michelle's favorite account manager. And there we go. We've got a, uh, uh, sorry, I said that for today. Uh, so now we've got a quotation that we've sent to the customer uh, and we've got a follow up uh, and we can see the status this is in. And if I ran uh, some of my pipeline reporting, I would see that I've got a quotation for uh, 600 pounds uh, in awaiting confirmation in this sales pipeline. If I just go to uh, the details page here, you can also uh, see uh, the notes of, uh, that have been typed in here, uh, and I can see that was a, there was a quotation sent with a bit of information. I can go in and have a look at that quotation as well if I wanted to. Ultimately, uh, when John uh, calls the customer back tomorrow uh, or later today, uh, John can uh, change the status of this to uh, cancelled if maybe the quotation has been cancelled because uh, Michelle's decided she doesn't want it or she's going to buy from somewhere else. Um, or I could change the status to ordered and actually confirm this sales order. So you can see that without too much balava, um, I've been able to create a quotation, send it to the customer, set a follow up so we can actually chase up this quotation uh, and I can track it through a basic pipeline. Let's just do uh, the more complex example, and then we'll kind of come back and have a look at how some of this is configured uh, and how flexible these different pipelines are. Because uh, although this is uh, an example pipeline, uh, even as a quotation, I could have three stages or four stages or five stages if I wanted to, uh, and I can call them different things uh, as I need to. So let's just go back to uh, Michelle now, and let's do our last example. Uh, and in our last example, uh, I'm going to manage a more complex sales uh, process where uh, rather than diving straight in and doing a quotation, perhaps I need to qualify the inquiry, understand what the customer is looking for, talk to them about their requirements before, long before I can even do a quotation for the customer. Uh, and particularly when I do the quotation, uh, 
uh, I might want to give the customer two different quotes with different options or uh, different phases or, 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 or whatever that might be. So let's go ahead and create a new sales lead now. Uh, and I'm going to call this just a project example, uh, just because I can't uh, be more imaginative than that. Uh, and I'm going to uh, give this a type of, so this is a fitment project uh and uh it's a new business uh pipeline and at the moment uh the inquiry is unqualified so let's create this and so now i've got a sales lead um i haven't got a quotation at the moment because i don't know what i'm quoting the customer for and you can see that there's quite a lot of stages uh in this uh pipeline uh, and uh, I can go through perhaps uh, and say, right, I'll uh, call Michelle tomorrow, uh, follow up and find out the requirements. And perhaps when uh, I speak to uh, Michelle tomorrow, uh, I can add some more notes. Uh, Michelle is interested in a new machine and installation whatever that might be uh, and you can see that you can start to uh, build up the uh, notes of uh, the sale i can also uh, look at perhaps there's a location that we're going to do the fitment and i can put the address in obviously that's their default address but i could go and change the address um, I can do multiple quotes, documents, etc. So let's go ahead uh, and just do a quote. So again, there could be multiple quotes here. Um, uh, so let's do uh, option one here. Uh, and again, I can template these. I haven't got any templates set up, but I could set up multiple templates. Uh, and then I just get these templates in a drop down uh, to make it nice and easy to produce my quotes quickly. Um, or I could search for a previous uh, similar project that we've done uh, and copy in the lines from that previous project uh, to, to start my quote off nice and quickly. Uh, but I'm just going to go through and create my quote uh, in the normal fashion. Uh, and again, you'd probably be putting on different products, uh, installation, fitment time, that kind of thing. Uh, but I'm just going to put a few simple products on here just to give you the idea. Um, and now that I've done this quotation for this project, obviously I could do as I did before and just send a simple email quote, but perhaps uh, in a more complex sale, I'm going to have to send a more complex document with more detail in it uh, about how that project is going to uh, happen, all the things that we're going to need to do in the different stages. So I'm going to create a new document uh, for this quotation and uh, i might have different templates set up like a project proposal obviously a simple quote uh perhaps a statement of work so i'm going to do a project proposal here uh, and you can see my template there and if i create this document it'll actually uh, create the document fill in uh, the details of my quotation and uh, generate that document for me and then open Microsoft Word so that I can start beginning uh, to edit that uh, more complex document uh, and put the details into my document. So we've got a nice cover page. Uh, we've got some background that I'm going to need to fill in the objectives, uh, how the solution uh, is going to be delivered. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, clearly being uh, more careful than that, maybe put the stages of my project delivery uh, and then also include the details of the pricing estimate uh, and maybe a site signature page and that kind of thing. So I typically spend uh, a little while making uh, a, uh, a, a a nice document there with all the detail in uh, for Michelle. Uh, and uh, maybe I'd get somebody else to check that or or I just come back and double check it myself. But eventually I'm going to want to send that to the customer. Um, so now I'm going to do an email uh, and paste. Perhaps I'll just do a basic email um, or I can do a quotation cover email. Uh, and if I go to add attachments to that, I can choose that document we've already produced. 
uh, that proposal document. I can attach it as a PDF. Uh, and uh, there we go, I've got my email uh, all set up, ready to go with the PDF uh, of that more complex Word document uh, all set up, and I can now send that to Michelle. So there you can start to see uh, how the more complex uh, sales is un sale is unravelling, uh, and we've got one quote against this uh, sales lead. Uh, I could actually go ahead and create another quote. So I could create an option two uh, and send that to Michelle uh, with different details on, uh, or maybe do a new iteration of this existing uh, quotation and send her another uh, iteration of that. But if we go back to the details of uh, this, uh, I can uh, perhaps also change the status uh, and say uh, it's now qualified. Uh, and my percentage likelihood of closing this deal is, uh, let's say, 75%. Uh, it's looking pretty good, um, and I'm expecting to close it sometime uh, towards the end of July. And obviously, I can then uh, uh, perhaps come back a little bit later on, uh, revisit this. Uh, I can then, uh, when I reload it, I'll see some of the other uh, notes and, and conversations that we've had with Michelle, uh, I'll be able to move it on to the next status, uh, assign it to somebody else perhaps. Uh, obviously, uh, I probably wouldn't change the type, but I could do that uh, if, if the type of cell uh, changes, uh, but I can maybe move it on to uh, in negotiation. So we're now in negotiation with Michelle. And uh, so you can see the sort of uh, uh, different uh, sales inquiries. And if I go to some of the reports, you can see uh, all the different uh, outstanding uh, sales inquiries we've got. Uh, and you can see that we can report on the status of those, um, a weighted value based on uh, how likely they are to close and how big the quote is uh, that we've done or how big the estimated value is before we've done a quote. Uh, and I can do a lot of uh, different reporting. Uh, and if you're interested in the reporting, uh, we've got some other webinars uh, coming up on uh, uh, reporting uh, and the details of doing pipeline reports and different types of uh, sales uh, analysis. So let's just uh, briefly return to our uh, presentation. So those are the three different categories of sales pipelines and quotations. Uh, and in terms of what we've seen in the CRM, uh, for the more complex uh, pipelines, we've seen uh, much more complex uh, sales pipelines uh, that are fully customized. Well, I kind of ran out of time uh, and didn't get the chance to show you the details of those different, uh, setting up the different statuses, but it's quite easy to, to, to flex those different stages. Uh, and you can do multiple quotations within one sales uh, pipeline or sales lead. In the medium complexity, we're perhaps doing simpler uh, quotation pipelines. So we've still got a pipeline, we've still got a follow-up process, uh, but uh, less screens involved, uh, less fields to set up, and just a quicker process for our sales team uh, to, to, to generate a quote fairly quickly, set the follow-up and track that through a simple pipeline. And for the uh, very simplest uh, sales that we might make, we've got fast uh, order entry uh, for the very quickest types of sale where I just want to put my order in, confirm the prices over the phone, uh, and then confirm that through to uh, my inventory management system uh, or my ERP, whatever system I'm using. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your uh, time and attention this morning. Um, if you do have uh, any questions, uh, you can either uh, ask them now on the panel, uh, or you can uh, send us questions afterwards. Um, if there's any questions that get asked, uh, we'll, uh, I can see there aren't any questions being asked so far during the webinar. Um, if there are any more questions that are asked at the end, uh, you can uh, feel free to email us and we'll email you back or uh, uh, we'll follow up on any questions that appear on the panel uh, towards the end of this webinar. Um, if you'd like some more information, um, we've got our YouTube channel. Uh, and you can just go to, to YouTube and search for Prospect 365 uh, to find the details of that channel. Uh, we've got our Prospect Academy, 
uh, and uh, you can also chat to us with our uh, online chat or uh, visit our LinkedIn uh, webinar group to keep up to date with our webinars. Uh, you can also find all the upcoming webinars at prospectsoft.com forward slash webinars. Uh, we've got lots more coming up uh, uh, on, on some related topics uh, to, to help you uh, manage your sales pipelines and reporting uh, as you take this forward. Thank you very much for your time.